McHale who gets the He's got patrol. You are looking live at Tartan Arena in Oakdale, Minnesota on the campus of Tartan High School as we get set to bring you high school hockey on this chilly Thursday night as the Tartan Titans host the South St. Paul Packers. Welcome to the rink everybody, Jeff Disher with you and uh, as we get set to see Tartan and South St. Paul, these teams have had roller coaster years on both ends. Tartan enters the night and as and actually we'll flip over to the South St. Paul side first introducing the visitor there's Pete Schultz on your screen there the Packers enter the night with an 8 9 and 3 record and they most recently took care of St. Paul Johnson in overtime by a count of 4 to 3 on Tuesday night if we flip over to the Tartan side of the ledger they come in with a 10 and 9 mark you see their head coach Cole Leach on your screen Tartan 10 and 9 on the year. They have a two game win streak going back to last weekend, or last week rather, when they defeated both St. Paul Academy and Apple Valley. We go to the goaltenders. For South St. Paul, it's number 39, Jacob Lissick, who enters with a 3.83891 goals against. And we will introduce the Tartan goaltender when we get a moment as we are underway, as that will be inserted into the zone by Marshall Ahn. Now South St. Paul with the first clear is that will actually go back to Reed Clunder. And South St. Paul having trouble clearing as that one's kept in at the line momentarily. Here come the Packers back out to center. This one picked up by On. On skates around two and three as On will enter the zone on side. He has a trailer with him on on his backhand. His shot off the side of the cage. Rebound comes to the Packers as they skate out past to center. And now back into the zone it'll go. It is picked up by Josh Lissick. And that pass intended for Jacob Saber. In on goal, the save made by Lissick. And it squirts out to the corner. Found by, Will by Brandon Reynolds as this one will go back into the Saint or South St. Paul defensive zone to be picked up by Josh Lissick. 15.50 left to go in the opening frame as South St. Paul having trouble clearing until just there to the neutral zone. Chipped ahead and picked up by Carter Heimerl. And it goes the length of the ice for Tartan to pick up. Scrum, at, or almost a scrum at the half wall as South St. Paul will dump that one in. Tartan having trouble advancing the puck until just there as Nathan O'Sell did the honors. Line change starting for the Tartan Titans. And now around it'll come to Owen Ramirez. 17 points on the year for Ramirez. 69 in his career. Brought ahead by Tartan to center and whiffing on the pass was Braden, uh, Braden Fairbanks. And now South St. Paul will come out to center 
as that one is chipped in by Polonichuk. Two minutes and change have been played, and South St. Paul with some offense going. That shot from the point, wide of the mark after it got tipped, kept in by McClellan at the line. Now it'll come back out to McClellan as he tomahawks it back into the zone. We're waiting for it as Fairbanks. Weird pinball flipper style bounce is picked up by Fairbanks and rushed back behind the safety of his own net. Fairbanks advances to center, but the puck stolen by Pelotichuk and sent in. These two teams feeling each other out in the early stages of a scoreless game. Brought ahead though by Fairbanks to center and just a little bit further before the dump in. Picking it up for South St. Paul is Reed Clunder who is a Wisconsin Badger commitment. Brought ahead though by Tartan but only as far as the far blue line. It'll come into Reynolds. He got upended and here come the Tartan Titans back. Picked up on the far side by Olsen. And now it'll be touched over to Leo Milan, who I believe had three assists, if I, or three assists on the year if I saw that correctly. Milan will send that one the length of the ice and a quick shot misses everything from Kistner. Back behind and Tartan now with some offensive pressure. Left circle, looking for a deflection was Marshall on that he did not receive. 13 and a quarter left to play in the first period as this one is found by Milan. His shot gloved and covered by Jacob Lissick. Let's introduce you to the Tartan goaltender if we have a second as you see Lissick on your screen. That would be Jack Cashin. Six and four on the year with a 3.12 goals against average and an 891 on the save percentage as you see. Puck is down, we're back underway. Tartan wins the draw. Back around the bend it goes. And this one will be found by Putzier. And Putzier kept it in. Now over into the far corner. And a centering feed to no one in particular. And I feel like that description is apt of Tartan's year. Brought ahead though by South St. Paul and Winsensen. And brought back ahead on the ricochet by Tartan. Kept in via a skate of Marshall on, and he did not get a shot away. Now South St. Paul coming back up the length of the sheet, and these teams playing Pong early, which Atari would appreciate. 12 minutes and 20 seconds left to play in the first period as Tartan will look to work ahead. Touched over near Marshall on. 20 points on the year for on. He's one away from matching his number. Now over to Josh Lissick, this one goes. And South St. Paul having trouble clearing the zone until just there. Olsen finds Braden Fairbanks. And now that one comes up near Mitch Felton for South St. Paul. Touched ahead by Reed Plunder, who we mentioned was the Badger commitment, headed to the Big Ten. And that puck left the facility. So with 11.46 to play in period one, we are still without a goal. You see, uh, that is actually Cole Sitar in net for South St. Paul. He has a 2.94 and a 9.12 save percentage. 4 3 and 1 on the year for Sitar. So we all got, got fooled as Tartan looks to bring it ahead. Length of the ice, this one will go. And South St. Paul looking to clear. They can't as that shot just up over the helmet of Sitar. And now sending it ahead is Felton back to center where Fairbanks waits. Fairbanks in on side. And now Clunder will send it around the bend in the hopes of finding some offense for the Packers. Strecker, and this is Bo Strecker instead of his brother Shet, who, or Easton, I should say, who is on the same line with him. Brock and Shet are the Bertelson boys. 10 and three quarters left to play in the first period of play from here in Oakdale as 
both teams still feeling each other out in this game already. A much better game in the early going than the game we saw three weeks ago was an offside call, halts play. Don't even have time to get the last 10 uh, matchups between these two teams in as the puck is down right then and there. Brought ahead by Ramirez for South St. Paul and going near his backside to play that would have been Milan, I believe. Tartan looks to advance the puck. That pass intended for Luke Young. And now South St. Paul struggling, and that will be an icing call. Mentioned the last 10 times that these two have laced up. Tartan has won seven of, the, of those 10 games, and the meeting this year came on the, or, or came a couple weeks ago when South St. Paul defeated Tartan four to one. Brought back ahead, or brought back off the faceoff victory by South St. Paul as they look to advance. Two on two at the line come the, the Packers, and that's Josh Lissick around the corner. I don't know that we have a shot on goal in the game already. I think everything has been off the side of the net, if not maybe one shot on goal. South St. Paul with control as that one is brought ahead by Jacob Saver. Saver is one of our players to watch tonight as that shot from Ramirez cruises by everything and the rebound did as well. South St. Paul in the midst of a line change as we have nine and a quarter left in the first period. Osell looking for a teammate and eventually it'll get to Brock Bertelson. Bertelson enters the zone, right circle on his backhand and he lost the angle. Bertelson. Waiting for a teammate, got one, and that will eventually get to Milan. Milan dropped it off. Quick shot from the left point, wouldn't go. Rebound squirts into the near half, or onto the near half wall where Milan kept it in. Fought for at the half wall, kept alive by Tartan. That'll be uh, Bo Strecker. Milan looking, shooting, save made. Don't know how that puck didn't get tipped on the way in. Eight and a half to play in the period as that centering pass deflected and Tartan will have to regather. Brought ahead and a big hit delivered there on Jonah Roberts. And that will stop play because of an interference call against Clunder. So Reed Clunder will go to the box for interference at eight minutes and 41 seconds, you see Jonah Roberts up off the ice like nothing happened. Power play time for Tartan, and they answer with an 18.2% power play. That's 12 of 66 for those of you who don't like math. Brought ahead though by Tartan early in the power play. This one will come over to On. On dropped it down low, centering feed from Bertelson would not go. Now around the corner it went. Dropped off, right corner. And giving chase will be On, back out to neutral. Here comes Tartan once again. On, left circle, lost the puck for a moment. On off the side of the net. Rebound back out, and Tartan will have to regather. Seven and a half minutes remaining in the period as this one will find Schwantes. Have an interesting note on, on uh, Landon Schwantes that I shared against Matamidi, but we'll share again when time permits. Schwantes with a centering pass there that is ejected by South St. Paul. 50 left on the power play. By the way, South St. Paul's penalty kill in an 8-3-8 clip, an 83.8% clip, 62 of 74. Tartan now with the puck and possession. This one will find Pootzier. 
who sends it over to Strecker, got it back to Pudzier, tipped on the way in and the save is made. Six forty-four left to play in the first period. You see Pete Schultz on the bench of South St. Paul. And Tartan will maintain control. This is Strecker. Strecker dropped it off. And that's Bo dropping it to Easton. Easton, or sorry, Bo. Back to Pootsier, his shot off the glass. And the rebound squirts behind the cage. Quick shot from the right circle, ejected by South St. Paul. It'll go the length of the ice for an icing call. Power play over, five-a-side hockey we play. Looking forward to the first intermission as uh, we have a bit of a blast from the past upcoming. So that'll be fun to share that with you. Uh, upcoming for the first and second intermissions tonight. Puck is down, face off one by Tartan. We call that a tease in this business. <laughs> Tartan with control, racing behind the safety of their own net is Olsen. Olsen tried to get it over to On, was unsuccessful as that one came to Cam Clunder. Had 33 points back in 2017-18, which is the highest yearly output for Clunder so far in his career. Tipped ahead by Tartan and an icing call as Brock Bertelson could not maintain control. You see the tail of the tape for Tartan and South St. Paul. Tartan has 3.58 goals against that they give up and 3.47 scored. For South St. Paul, 3.6 goals given up to 2.5 scored. And we gave you the special teams numbers earlier, at least on one side of the puck. That shot goes in on goal and Sitar makes the save. Back again comes the tail of the tape. You see the rest of the special teams numbers but I'll reference the South St. Paul power play when the time counts. Five and a quarter left to go in the first frame here from Oakdale. South St. Paul coming ahead. This is Pelotichuk. Pelotichuk looking for a teammate. And now going over to find it is Josh Lissick as it is found by Chet Bertelson. Bertelson got it over to Young, and Young ran in two as he lost the puck. Quick centering feed for a shot that whizzed by the cage, and Leo Milan kept it alive for Tartan. Brought back over where Cam Clunder will pick it up. And now South St. Paul out with it. This is Clunder, he got upended right at the entry to the right circle. And now 420 remains in the period. Brought back ahead off a dump in by Tartan. And we are still without a goal. Puck is, er, whistle, puck out of play. I believe it went into the South St. Paul bench. So we've been here before. I believe it was a buzzer beating goal of uh, then Matamidis that got the scoring started in that contest, but then Tartan woke up and defeated Matamidi with three straight, if I remember correctly. Brought ahead by South St. Paul in a net save made, but the loose change picked up in the corner by Bo Strecker. Strecker, one-handed backhand, as that one came over to Easton Strecker. Strecker looking for a teammate, but that got deflected by Brandon Ogren. Brought ahead by Tartan, 
to center as they will regather. Bo Strecker racing in, left circle, backhand, would not go, and I don't think that was intended as a shot. Right in on net, trouble for Sitar. And now South St. Paul will come back out to center and beyond for a line change. Icing waved with three and a dime left in the period. Tartan looking for one of their own as well. And now here comes South St. Paul. This shot from Cam Clunder would have been a foul ball if we had been in Tampa Bay. That hit the roof. Two fifty-eight left to play, first period. South St. Paul, by the way, 28 trips to the state tournament between the years of 1945 and 1996. That shot right in on net, and that went into the upper netting. And this, or 2019-2020, is also the 75th anniversary for the South St. Paul hockey program. Puck down after a face-off in the neutral zone. Back underway we go. And now Milan chased, allowing South St. Paul to regain control. Centering feed, just missed the net. And a big hit there off the puck as it eventually will find Marshall on. On will send net the length of the ice, but it's not called icing. Kisner looking for a teammate. He found on. On, on his backhand, loose in front. Now to the side of the net, South St. Paul having trouble with it as their goaltender starts swimming, and Sitar, proving that he's good in a pool, swims and makes the save. My goodness. A goaltender shouldn't have to work that hard to make a save. And in any hockey game. Sitar did just that. Looking for his fifth win on the year. Brought ahead by South St. Paul as they're actually looking to clear the puck out of danger. That nearly hit the roof as it was on its way out. Now South St. Paul enters the zone. That one picked up by Jacob Saber. Saver into the corner as his mates enter the zone. Stuck in front is Noah Polotichuk as that one comes back to the point. Quick save made by Jack Cashin. One forty-five remaining in the first period. Scoreless game, and again, we've been here before. Brought ahead by Tartan after that face-off victory. And that'll be iced. Interesting face-off stat for you. Brock Bertelson for Tartan has won one more face-off than he's lost. That record, 274 and 273. Puck back down, Tartan wins another draw. Back around the corner it goes, stuffed in front, shot the goal. Believe that'll be Jonah Roberts. And if so, that is his fifth goal of the season. And Tartan goes ahead with a one nothing lead. Time of the goal, 15-36. Replay of the goal as the pass comes in from Easton Strecker. Roberts just tapped that home. So the assist goes to Streck to Easton Strecker, his 11th of the year, and Tartan is ahead, 1 0. Strecker. 
Puck is down, back underway we go. South St. Paul with possession as they enter the zone, but Tartan regains control. Buck and a dime left to go in the first period of play as Tartan races in again. Tartan delayed offside called, allowing South St. Paul to regain control for or one minute remaining as a steal by on leads to a shot from the high slot that went by the wayside. 45 left in the period. Now is South St. Paul looking to get some offense of their own. Three on one at the line, but Jacob Saver could not find the puck in his skates. Saver regains control and he throws it to McClellan who throws one on goal, 30 seconds to play. Tartan will chip that one out in a nice sand wedge. Back to the neutral zone it went. Tapped ahead by Heimerl. 15 to go in the period. Rugby scrum right in front of us. A South St. Paul re-enters. Final five seconds of the period and Tartan content to go to the room with a one nothing lead, that's what they'll do. So Tartan with a one nothing lead, we teased the first intermission feature or one of them. And it's a blast from the past that will come your way momentarily here on SEC Sports, but not before we tell you that Tartan is a one nothing lead at the end of one period. Back with the first intermission activities after this. Vision loss is not something that you feel until it happens. Most people lose their vision from diseases like macular degeneration and glaucoma, not at birth. With macular degeneration, you lose your central vision. You have a blind spot right in the center of your face, so I can't actually see your face. So even that little circle in which I could see became a big blur. I was 65 when I first was diagnosed with glaucoma. There were no symptoms. I had no headaches. Three million Americans have glaucoma, and half don't even know it. 11 million people in the United States have macular degeneration. You lose mobility, independence, changes your entire life. So many eye disorders can be treated if caught early. My husband tells me that I have beautiful brown eyes, and I don't want to lose that. Make a plan today to get your eyes checked. Visit brightfocus.org to learn more. Do you know what constitutes our Constitution? This living document that's a fusion of our forefathers' vision for the future of this nation? We have a Bill of Rights. We're not built for these rights, but we've been given these rights because we live. We don't have to pay every day when we don't watch what we say. A penny for our thoughts is not what we give, but we give off our thoughts by the way that we live. And there are soldiers who've died, men and women who've paid the price, in the blink of an eye given their lives to make our lives nice. And we can't fight to preserve these rights, to reach new heights, get through the darkest nights together if we don't know. We the people, we the future, can't make it right if we don't show an interest in learning the script that governs our lives. So forgive me if I'm wrong, but if you belong to this country, then there are rights that belong to you so long as you do one thing. You know your constitution and your freedom that it brings. You can't fight for what's right. You can't find a flaw if you've never shed light on the supreme law of the land. The land of the free and the home of the brave requires your knowledge and God's good grace in order to save our human race in the face of terror. And I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but you need to choose what you're going to do because you could lose everything. Since the moment you were born, I've made a thousand wishes. Wishes for your future in a world that's changing fast. For all of the things you may one day do, do play and laugh, do win and lose, do learn from your mistakes and challenge yourself to grow. Do not be afraid or make decisions based in fear. Do it all with confidence and with kindness and strength. Do call your mom and ask her for advice. And always do your best to remember that no matter what you do in this life, what matters to me is that you keep doing I love you always, mom. 
Not all kids with crooked teeth can afford braces. Luckily, there's donated orthodontic services from the American Association of Orthodontists. Kids who qualify can be matched with a volunteer orthodontist. Visit aaoinfo.org. Some kids never smile. They're embarrassed by their crooked teeth. They want braces like the other kids, but their families can't afford them. Some may even try to straighten their teeth themselves. That can make everything worse. Luckily, there's Donated Orthodontic Services, a program from the American Association of Orthodontists. It helps provide orthodontic treatment to kids and teens whose families can't afford it. For kids who apply, are approved, and are matched with a volunteer orthodontist, it can be life-changing. Their treatment is in the hands of an expert, a licensed local orthodontic specialist who improves their smiles by correctly aligning teeth and jaws. Some kids think they'll never smile again, but donated orthodontic services may help them smile with confidence. To link to the application and eligibility requirements, visit aaoinfo.org. Back at Tartan Arena on the site of Tartan High School in Oakdale, Minnesota. And we have a special surprise for you. It is the New Ulm Steel connection as Mike Simons has taken time from his busy bench duties to join yeah. us. Uh, you and I worked together a few years ago for the, the then Twin City Steel. Yeah. We won't talk about that or those times, those, <laughs> though they were good. Let's talk about the first period and what you saw as kind of our eyes on the bench, so to speak. And what did you see, first of all, uh, from the Tartan side that you enjoyed, I guess is the good, word. Good speed. They're, they're definitely flying tonight. You can see that they're in their home rink. Um, but definitely back and forth for both teams. And uh, South St. Paul? Uh, South St. Paul, I think we, we need to pick it up a little bit. I think that we had some little costly turnover at the end there. But definitely in the we're getting our feet underneath us. And speaking of turnovers, let's see if we can uh, watch the goal and review the goal as aha. Let's talk a little bit more then. Yeah. Um, Robert Jonah Roberts scored the game's first goal or the game's opening goal. Um, how do you respond if you're South St. Paul and looking to start the second period on a good note? Well, I know that they're going to stay into our, our system. They're going to come back. Uh, we've been actually pretty good. We've been coming back from games here. So it's uh, as long as we stay to our system and keep working, doing the, the proper things, they'll, be, they'll bounce back. And what do you, or how do you continue to do what you're doing if you're Tartan? Uh, Tartan's got it. Just keep using that speed. Uh, looks like they're exposing our, four, we have 4D, so it looks like they're going hard after our D there. So with our low numbers back there, they keep putting the pressure on us. I don't want to give too many trade secrets away on them makes sense let's take a look at the goal and this is off a nifty backhand feed from Easton Strecker far post and Roberts just put it home I would say hockey 101 and one of the worst goal uh, worst goals to give up if you're a goaltender yeah especially with about a minute left there in the period or close to a minute left you can see that he just beat the inside D there and got inside on the position uh, you know goalie should have been a little bit tighter on the pipe but you know, he's got to watch to see which way he's going to go, and he came out the right way that left that back door exposed. Well, you got a 50-50 shot, <laughs> and uh, unfortunately, South St. Paul got it wrong. And we will give you the top 20 rankings according to Let's Play Hockey in Class A. You see Tartan tied for 20th with Hutchinson, though uh, Hutchinson and Tartan have both played 19 games. South St. Paul does have a vote or numerous votes in UC Matamidi back to sixth. All, all three, uh, you got, we've got Matamidi, Gentry Academy, St. Paul Johnson, all in our conference here with Tartan and St. South St. Paul here. So it's a tough section to come out of. And Gentry is a newer school up in White Barrel, or uh, technically Bandas, Badness Heights. Yep. Uh, but St. Cloud Cathedral, if I can get the words right, leads class A. And just like that, we're going to have the second period for you. Actually, no, we've got a little bit more to talk about. Um, as far as South St. Paul has gone, it's been a roller coaster, roller coaster season for realistically both teams. Um, are the Packers 
doing anything, I guess the word would be differently uh, as, as sections approach? No, this is, it's been a fun year for us. Like you said, it's been a different year too because it's our 75th year. Yep. So we've got that going. And then we had uh, Doug Wooks passing. We did. So that was a tough one for the team and uh, a lot of the community. Um, but we just keep moving forward. Like we have the tradition that we just keep building off of and especially Luke Wooks legacy. Yes. So we just keep following suit with that. And, Everything sort of just falls in uh, place if we just keep, the boys keep doing what they're doing and keep working hard. How was the uh, remembrance, by the way? It was, it was really, it was good. We actually, um, the the weekend that we'll get past, we were up in Hibben. Okay. And the presentation up in Hibben was really nice. They did a really great job. Awesome. Well, we will actually uh, see the players coming back on the ice shortly to begin the, the second period. So, uh, <laughs> live TV apparently uh, is, is biting me on the backside. Anyway, um, the last 10 games for Tartan, I mentioned in game, um, Tartan's won seven of, seven of the last 10. Uh, aha, found it. Can you talk about the the earlier meeting two weeks ago when uh, Tartan and South St. Paul met at the aforementioned Woog Arena, which South St. Paul won for one? Yes, it was. We came. It was a. I, I can't remember the process or what happened though that week. We just had a, a tough week and we came back out and um, we played a really hard game. The boys played, came together. So we were. Some things were going clicking. Some different line changes had come together. Um, it was just a process of, of changes that worked out for us that day. And if we're fair, are, are high school teams in both classes changing things up to two sections as you see the section four A, uh, section four single A sta uh, standings with Tartan and South St. Paul four five? Yeah, it's gonna be a tough, tough section. Like I said, uh, we just played Johnson on Tuesday night yep. and beat them. Uh, I know that- Overtime. Overtime, yes. Uh, they're in the house tonight watching, and I also saw Matamita coach, so we're all <laughs> watching each other and seeing what's going to happen. You know, Simley, uh, they're right there with us too. It's a tough, tough, tough section. Uh, Johnson, especially, I look at their roster, and you got, I think there's eight or nine guys that are only juniors, and we're graduating 14 seniors, so they're going to be a team to watch out for next year for sure. Eey, don't make me shake like that, <laughs> Mike Simons. Um, looking at those and, and, and just seeing the, the end of that, would you say there's like a cliff there where the rankings are, I guess the word would be decent at some point and then it just falls off or is the no, section no. stacked from end to end? It's it's pretty close. Like that seven, eight, nine, they're, they're, they're decent teams. Like any team can beat each other in this section. So, you know, we don't take anybody lightly, that's for sure. You want to join us for the second inter yeah, or the come second on intermission? Back. We can talk about some old times. We'll see what we can do on that. <laughs> Mike, a pleasure, and uh, we'll see you back for the second intermission. All right, sounds good. Players coming out onto the ice for period number two, and uh, always good to hear and see Mike Simons. Uh, but he was the head coach of the New Ulm Steel for one season, uh, which is how he and I know each other. Jacob Saber on your screen there, 27 points on the season in 20 games played for South St. Paul. He's a player to watch. As team switch ends for the second period. On your screen there, Bo Strecker, six goals in the last four games. Uh, which contributes to his 19 point total over the course of the 1920 season. And uh, for with Tartan for a, for a second, I wanted to get to a stat on Chuantez that I, I shared in the first game that we saw Tartan play against Mount Amida and, it, and it's this, his father, Justin, who was at Tartan from 1988 to 1992, held career scoring records until 2014. Something to keep in mind as the second period is underway. And 
the rugby scrum results in a tartan possession. This is Putzier. Putzier threw it back to Milan. And Mike will actually be with us in the second intermission as well, talking a little bit more hockey. Brought ahead though by Tartan to center. And now South St. Paul back on the ricochet, ricochet and Atari plays Pong. Or a, they play Pong like Atari would appreciate if I can get the reference right. Brought ahead, or brought back in by South St. Paul. And now Tartan back on the ricochet. Back and forth we go as we are about a minute in. And now touched over and into the offensive zone comes Bo Strecker. Strecker shoved off the puck and a dump in for Tartan left the rink or no, I believe it was an offside call that called it play. You see Brandon Olsen on your screen there, 12 points on the season entering the entering play tonight. Easton Strecker and Jonah Roberts have the points so far for Tartan. As they hold a 1-0 lead in the early stages of period number two. Now Tartan looking to add to their lead. That puck comes up and comes down right at the half wall. And now South St. Paul advances. Clunder. And now Tartan back on the ricochet. Here comes Roberts. And Roberts will send that one in as he gets jammed back in behind. And now they, they race for it into the corner where a rugby scrum is won by South St. Paul. 15 to go in the second period. And now brought ahead by the Packers. Two on one at the line with a trailer. Quick shot by Clunder. Wouldn't go rebound score. <laughs> 2 16, the time of the goal. And it'll be Owen Ramirez's 18th point of the year. Fifth goal for him. Off a rebound. Puck is back down and we're underway. Tartan now having to play even with South St. Paul. Puck squirts out and is found by Bertelson. Kept alive at the point by Putzier. Now around the corner. This one touched over by Schwantes. Schwantes waiting, left circle, dropped it up, got it to Shett Bertelson, but it wouldn't go for him. Shett will pick it up. And now South St. Paul will exit the zone. Whistle, penalty behind the play, and it is a slash at 258. Who is the guilty? Titan. The guilty Titan is Chet Bertelson for the slash. So South St. Paul's power play, a one point, or a 164, 11, for 67, or 11 of 67 for those who don't like math. And Tartan's penalty kill, 55 of 67, or, point, or 821, 82.1% for those who actually like math. I don't know many of those, however, Tartan will uh, just dump that the length of the ice as we're under a football quarter remaining in the second period. South St. Paul on the power play, which effectively is underway. Puck kicks into the zone offside at the line of the Packers. And we'll have, we'll have a faceoff in the neutral zone. Puck is back down, we're underway. Tartan wins the draw. 
And now this one picked up by Reed Klunder, who is a badger, a badger commit, not a badger yet, as that puck left the ice. And I know I've mentioned Jay Shower at least once tonight. He transferred from Hastings High School and he has 19 points in his career so far, does shower for the Packers. Maybe something we can talk up with Mike Simons at intermission. 13-20 left to play, second period of play. And it is South St. Paul on the power play as that one is dumped in by Clunder. Clunder looking for a teammate. And now Tartan looking to clear it away with Kistner as he'll send that the length of the ice. Icing waved and a big hit frees the puck up and opens the door to the locker rooms. Oh, gotta have that thing a little bit more secure. Oh, I have not seen that in my years of broadcasting as another penalty called against Tartan and Brock Bertelson this time at four minutes and two. Boarding, question mark. I did not get the call, but it is South St. Paul with a five on three power play for 47. Quick shot by McClellan into the catching glove of Cashin. Minute and four of five on four regular power play for South St. Paul coming. You'd think they'd score in the man advantage that they've got here. McClellan sends, the, or sends that to Ramirez and Ramirez chipped that one down low. Centering feed too hot to handle, but McClellan will pick it back up. McClellan from the point, McClellan over. Quick shot from Ramirez would not go. Another, another slam dunk try wouldn't go for South St. Paul either. Tartan will clear it the length of the ice and they can do that for a minute and 13 legally. Sent the length of the ice, but it is offside at the line for South St. Paul, stopping play with 12.07 left in the second. One to one, our score. Six seconds remaining in the original penalty. And I suppose you could say Tartan is staying alive. If you'll excuse the Bee Gees reference. Puck is down, face off one by South St. Paul. And the original penalty comes to an end. Final minute of power play time for South St. Paul, regularly this time, as Tartan advances into the zone. Brought ahead by Fairbanks, but only as far as the circles. South St. Paul back on the ricochet they go. And now it'll be found by Jacob Saber, who is upended. Chased by Clunder. Clunder waiting. Now looking for a teammate as he skates to the neutral zone. Clunder gets around one, finds the puck in the corner, and Clunder now looking for a teammate. And it drove him crazy, much like it did John Mellencamp when he was looking for a lover. Brought ahead, though, by Tartan. And now line changes for both teams start as we come down to the final 11 minutes and a dime in the period. Brought ahead though by Clunder and Reed Clunder's shot missed everything. Awkwardly into the boards is Easton Strecker, but he gets up like nothing happened. Give and go into the left circle, quick shot, missed everything. A net still loose in front. And now it'll go the length of the ice as it rolls right in on net, actually evading icing. Puck is down, or puck is frozen. And Tartan is six and one when they lead after one period of play as they did this evening.
Puck is down, face off one by Tartan, a shot from Pootzier was blocked. Second try wouldn't go as it was deflected. Now South St. Paul trying to clear. Pootzier with a shot that wouldn't fly. Quick shot to go on the turnaround. It is Tartan with a 2-1 lead. Time of the goal, 6.31. You would assume Marshall on with his 10th of the year. Tenth goal of the year, 21st point, and he's a minus seven now as we update that stat. Tartan with the faceoff win as they hold a 2-1 lead. That shot by Pootzier from the neutral zone. We can, we can safely call that shot as being from Woodbury. As you see the goal here. They give assists to Easton Strecker. And I believe Brock Bertelson got another one. I'll have to double check that, but it is Tartan with a 2-1 lead. Puck is back down, we're back underway. Tartan now with a lead to play with. Quick shot in on goal and Sitar with a save. We originally thought it was Jacob Lissick in net, that was not confirmed. And Sitar keeps South St. Paul alive. Face off. One by Tartan, quick shot shoved away by Sitar. Now it'll come back behind the cage and around the corner. Tartan with a shot just wide right of Sitar. Now a floater into the corner leads to almost a rugby scrum as the Packers will send it out. This is Wilebsi, or Wilebski I should say. And a big hit behind the play there as that one is tapped in by Ogren. Kept alive by the Packers into the offensive zone. Ogren goes down and that allows Tartan to clear. Brought ahead by Kisner. Kisner looked for a teammate and he didn't find one. Brought ahead by the Packers to center and shot right back in by the Titans. Under 10 minutes to play in the period. And now the Packers will shoot one the length of the ice or dump one in the length for an icing call with 9.16. South St. Paul 0-5-1 when trailing after one period. We uh, spotlight Tartan after the first when they lead. And so we had to flip that one around to give you the entire story. Nine and a quarter left to go, second period of play. Rugby scrum leads to a pass to Fairbanks. Over left circle, quick shot, shoved away. Tartan with possession. As they circle around to the Titans, this is Schwantez, his shot near side wouldn't go. Rebound coming to Luke Young, and Young puts it back in the direction of Schwantez. Now it'll be found by Bertelson, and Shet Bertelson finds Schwantez. Schwantez looking, looking, shoved. Rugby scrum, Schwantez tried to clear. He was unsuccessful in, in doing that as it went over to Shower. Jay Shower cleared it to neutral. 8.20 to play in the second period as this one will bounce up ice for an icing call that will lead to a faceoff in the Tartan defensive zone. Puck down, face off one by South St. Paul. As that one will come back around the bend, picked up by Nathan O'Sell. Tartan having trouble clearing the zone in this sequence. 
as that one is now lit, or led into a two-on-one opportunity. Stryker with a shot, and it went wide, but the net coming off leads to the whistle. And a little bit of extra handiwork, I suppose, done by Osell. And I wonder if people, or if uh, skaters will go to the principal's office for that. You see Tartan skate in. This is Strecker with a nifty pass to his brother. Both, Bo to Easton. And the save which led to the net coming off. No penalties assessed in that little bit of a meeting of the minds after. Back underway, and here comes South St. Paul. Big hit delivered on Reynolds that he partially evaded. Puck bouncing around like a jumping bean and Tartan having trouble clearing. They did just that. And now coming ahead is Roberts. Roberts with a shot off a pad. It'll go instead to Easton Strecker who kept it alive. Strecker down in a heap as he I believe went head first into the wall. But play stops. What have we? We have a penalty against Reed Clunder for what? Head contact. So it'll be head contact to Clunder, and that leads to an automatic five minute major. Not even a check from behind. Straight head contact. And you see South St. Paul's coaching staff under Pete Schultz not happy about that decision. Puck is down five minutes, score as you like, power play for Tartan. Which means it does not end on the first goal. This will be a huge kill if South St. Paul can get it. Tartan brings it ahead. This is Marshall on who sends it away. Shot from the slot by Schwantez wouldn't go. And now South St. Paul will clear. We're gonna be saying that for the next four and a half minutes assuredly. 6.50 left to go in the second period of play. Five minute head contact penalty for South St. Paul as they look to skate it ahead. Two on one now with a trailer. Quick shot by Wincents and wouldn't go, and the rebound off the side of the net. Now Tartan will clear. One minute of the penalty has elapsed. And now that puck floats over for Tartan to grab. Fairbanks. And on tried to clear it, but he was unsuccessful. So Schwantez has to pick up the trash. Here comes on. Now it'll go back over. As a quick shot there, whizzes by the cage from Marshall on. And now Tartan re-enters with Schwantez. Back into the neutral zone, his pass blocked, but he picks it back up. Schwantez in on side as it goes to Fairbanks. Fairbanks run in two, and now a crowd gathers, but play continues. Another penalty coming as Tartan with possession. That shot blocked away. Rebound stuffed by the side of the net, and the whistle stops play. Boarding the call this time. So South St. Paul shooting themselves square in the backside as that'll be Brandon Ogren going for boarding and you see it right here, bang. And he knew it as soon as it happened. Brandon Ogren, not happy. I wouldn't be either. So three minutes and three of the major still to kill. Pete Schultz getting an explanation as a timeout called. They actually will call it a roughing minor at 11.35. 
so teams taking a timeout. I believe that is a South St. Paul timeout just to make sure they breathe and go back to basics. Let's take another look at what caused the most recent minor penalty. And you saw the end of it as the hit from Ogren was a classic example of what, it, what not to do as far as boarding goes. And if you're Tartan, you can score at will for three minutes and three seconds because that's the first penalty on the board. So in this case, because the major is still going on, Tartan can score at will. Coot Zeter has one intercepted from him. And now Tartan's Jack Cashin playing the smart way and going to the corner with his, his outlet feed. It'll go to Roberts, who has the game's opening goal. Roberts back to Bo Strecker. Strecker dropped one. Strecker got it back. Bo with a shot, and it's gloved by Sitar. So we'll have an extra 63 seconds of power play once the minor is done. Because the minor will actually expire first. Putzier sends it cross ice. Putzier got it back high slot. Hit shot missed the missed wide. Bo Strecker with Putzier. Strecker to Putzier. Putzier back down low. Putzier loads, fires on the one time, wouldn't go, rebound, score! Mob scene on the near wall, who is the goal scorer, I ask you. I believe it'll be Jonah Roberts with his second. Three, one, Tartan. Time of the goal, 12.26. We'll take another look. Pootzier dropped it off, got it back, was tipped in front by Roberts, who throws it in. 3-1 Tartan. 4.25 left to go in the second period of play. I'll be anxious to talk to Mike Simons here in a little bit. <laughs> Brought ahead though by South St. Paul. Line change behind the play happening for the Packers. And they're wondering what the heck happened. Brought ahead by Marshall on. And now that'll be dropped off to Kisner with a shot that sails into the corner. Four minutes left to play. That'll come instead to Schwantes. Schwantes goes to Fairbanks with this, and Fairbanks waits for On. On. Sent cross ice uh, by Fairbanks. And now Tartan with a minute 13 left to work with on a power play. The Titans really trying to force South St. Paul into another mistake, which keeps, which keep compounding two mistakes. 55 left on the power play as that pass in from Fairbanks leads to a shot that just missed the net. Rebound comes to the near corner, Fairbanks dropped it off. And now a shot from the point almost in on net as the rebound is stuffed and the save is made by Sitar. Three minutes and three pennies left to go in the bank. Second period of play, 40 left on the man advantage. We'll have a face off in the corner and the puck is down. Pootzier sends that one across. Bertelson with a shot that wouldn't go. Rebound back over and it got to Roberts. Roberts looking for a trick. Roberts dropped it off to Bertelson. Bertelson over to Putzier. That shot deflected out of play by Ramirez. 
and uh, the clock stops with 2.44 left to play. Twenty one left on the power play. Puck down, face off one by South St. Paul. All they can do is clear for fifteen seconds. Now Tartan will look to bring it ahead. In on side of the Titans, Putzier up the left side. Penalty expires. Five aside we play with two twenty left. And now Tartan out skating South St. Paul as this one is found by Clunder. Hit shot save, rebound off everything, but it gets a crazy deflection. And now the puck played back into the offensive zone and we have a stoppage for offside, I believe. I spoke of madness earlier in the day. We're seeing it. Two minutes and six seconds left to play, second period of play. Except we can't call Tartan Arena the Madhouse on Madison. That's reserved for the United Center. Brought ahead by Schwantez for a shot that's saved by Sitar. This place is a madhouse, if only for a night. 1.53 left in the second period. Puck down, face off one by Tartan. Puck still loose as that one is advanced by Bertelson and that's Shet instead of Bo. It'll come back over for South St. Paul to clear. They're down two with 94 remaining in the period. Out to center and South St. Paul will clear it in. No icing because they were on the right side of the line. And now Tartan will look to advance and look to run it high. That puck dropped off to Schwantes. He couldn't control in his skates. This is Shet Bertelson who dropped it near Schwantes. Min uh, minute and a dime left to play as that one will come to Lissick. That's Josh Lissick who has 11 points on the season entering play tonight. Ice and call with 63 seconds left. This is going to be an interesting second intermission. I'm interested to hear Mike's take. We'll get that here in a little bit. Final minute of play. As a shot in from on went far side. Tartan with a 3-1 advantage. And the puck into the corner. Now coming ahead is Packle. Or actually check that, that's when Sensen. Sending it around the corner. Race is over, does Ramirez, and he finds the puck. 30 left in the period, as that one is found by Pelotichuk. Quick shot up over the net, and racing to it was Jacob Saver. 23 now left as Saver is upended, and the shot kept, or the shot from the point, allowing the puck to be kept in, and a crowd is gathered back behind the cage as one in two was Jack Cashin. Madhouse on Madison indeed. Waiting to see what comes from this as you see the play that led to the goaltender getting run over. And that's just an innocent shot. I don't know that Cashin had control per se, but he got the whistle right as he was getting run over. No. No penalties coming from this apparently. With 17.6 seconds to go in the period. Just when you think you've seen it all, folks. Now, South St. Paul had an extra man on the ice. But they get it square. 15 to go in the period as South St. Paul won the draw. Here comes Tartan, back to center and beyond. Easton Strecker with it, 
Shot from Bo Strecker in on net, and we have a six and a half more. Face off in the near circle. <laughs> This will be the last face off of the period as it's won by South St. Paul. Josh Lissick around the corner and time will run out. At the end of two, it is Tartan with a 3-1 lead. As we go to the second intermission with Mike Simons coming, we'll have that for you after a quick timeout, this should be interesting. The millions of people who either physically or financially do not have access to health care are staggering. part of what makes it beautiful is people come here with just a heart to serve and a heart to make a difference. To open my eyes to these people who truly have no options and are helpless to do anything for their condition. People who have been told no their whole lives can finally be told yes. It's life changing. I'm a veteran. We hit a mine in Vietnam. When I came home, I didn't know where to turn. As America's veterans face challenges, DAV is there. My victory's been never giving up hope. My wife is always there to remind me we have a life to live. DAV provides a lifetime of support, helping veterans of every generation get the benefits they've earned. I am a veteran, but after I got out, I spent two years alone and homeless. Every year, DAV helps more than a million veterans so they can reach victories great and small. My victory was finding the support to get back on my feet. Now I'm getting things right with my family. I finally admitted with my PTSD, I wasn't doing well. But there's more to be done and more victories to be won. Now I wish I'd found DAV sooner. I am a veteran. My victory is just enjoying each day. Help support more victories for veterans. Go to DAV.org. Chiru has no choice. She and millions like her must walk miles every day for dirty water. But together, we can end their walk by providing clean water close by. Instead of spending hours walking to get water that makes them sick, girls can be in a classroom that expands their minds, and moms will gain back time to care for their families. Sons and daughters can grow up strong, finally free of sicknesses caused by dirty water. At World Vision, care about clean water runs deep. Deep enough to reach one new person with clean water every 10 seconds. Because every child, every person, everywhere deserves clean water and the chance to rise to their full potential. It's true, when you just add water, you change a life. Learn more at worldvision.org. What to expect when you're expecting a teenager. Hey guys, today we're talking about how to wake up your teen. And this works literally every time. Give kisses. Give kisses. Look. Give kisses. Give kisses. You heard how loud that was. I know. I heard. That? I heard. It, it, it wasn't you. Yeah. It was the. Is that bacon? You don't have to know it all to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same.
Baked it. Back. Whoop. Back for period number two. Hi. We're on, uh, we're on camera, <laughs> apparently. There we go. Uh, we're back for period number two. Dish and Mike Simons with you. And uh, after two periods of play, Tartan leads by a count of three to one. We saw a little bit of craziness in that middle uh, middle period. Yeah, that was wild. We got a lot of crazy, you know, big hits, fast play, some good shots on net, but a lot lot more hits and penalties than we, I, I, I think that we need. <laughs> <laughs> I would say on, on both ends as uh, we're on camera once again, but uh, let's recap the period. First of all, Owen Ramirez yeah. for South St. Paul really came to the fore with uh, with his goal uh, early in the period, as that would be his fifth goal of the year. Yeah, that was a it was actually a nice play he, for a defender. He trailed that play all the way in. You know, I thought the wing the way that it was a two on one. He passed it over and took the shot on that. He had an open good 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 net to shoot at, but defense followed in all the way in and buried it home where he's supposed to. And flipping the script as we see a replay here. Hope that's of, the first goal. Last That's game. the first goal or of the game from period. Jonah Roberts in the first period. Now, I believe it's, it is a ho oh, second period goal that we're seeing from. That's a save there. That's a good save Strecker, he made on that. Struck on the shot. Yep. Great save with the net coming off. And this is all before the uh, nastiness happened. This is right. Yeah, he, got, this he banged is, that one home. Yep, that was Roberts' second goal. Um, leading, and that's Tartan's last goal of the game thus far. Stre Easton Strecker with two assists. But let's talk a little bit about the craziness, and I referenced the Madhouse on Madison in game, that's the United Center for those who are unaware, um, in Chicago. And kind of kind of talk to us about how the whole fracas from really the time that the or that the goaltender got run over to the end of the period looks to you. I, I'm just seeing the boys finishing their checks. You know, they're going hard, they're going through the checks, and uh, you know, some sometimes you can do that, sometimes you can't. With these new rules, yet you, you have to be careful of what you do. And and I thought the officials stepping in when they needed to was really a great idea because there's a fine line that you can you can tiptoe between losing control and maintaining it. Yeah, it can go either way with, you know, depends on how the refs are. They can either keep good, good, good control of it or it could get out of hand where it seems like it might've got a little out of hand. You know, it just depends on which which way those calls are going. So that's, it's like both teams are at each other. But that's why you call a five minute head contact penalty when you do. Yep. But that was a huge moment in time in the second period for South St. Paul to kind of, I guess we'll say, kill easily or easily um, but what does South St. Paul do going forward being that they are down on the scoreboard 3-1 going into the third right now I don't think they have to change really too much of our play they they look they look like they were moving pretty good um, you know I think if they just settle down focus on playing the puck more than the body now and start attacking the net I think good things will happen but oh. I think Tartan's got to just keep up that physicality because they keep getting under our skin and the boys are retaliating. And that's where I think we're getting some of those penalty trouble. You answered my next question about what Tartan continues to do, would continue to do. Let's take a look at the standings, if we can, in the Metro East. You see Tartan and South St. Paul, fifth and sixth in the conference, respectively. Uh, but both records sort of indicative of an up and down season and I know somebody who is on this or at this facility who equated it to a roller coaster uh, realistically for Tartan but you could say the same for South St. Paul as well yeah definitely it's been uh, oh here it is <laughs> and he goes to it wow <laughs> uh, Tartan winning three of the first five games that's what that's another tease that we call in the business uh, but they lost three of their next four, uh, including Matamidi back, which which I saw on January 9th with our good friend Will Anderson. Uh, that was a three in a row or a streak of three wins in a row. They lost three in a row after that streak, 
And now they've won three of the last four games in, into this evening. That, that is the definition of roller coaster right there. <laughs> it looks like a Zamboni going up and down, though. Uh, <laughs> that's good. That's good art. That's good artistry. <laughs> Uh, but you can say the same for the South St. Paul Packers that we can't do graphically as we're back on camera. Yeah. Um, South St. Paul beat Johnson by a count of 4-3 in overtime Tuesday night, yep. as we discussed. But they lost to Matamidi and uh, St. Thomas Academy by a combined count of 13-3 in this last week. Yeah. Would you say that South St. Paul is, let's say, beating the teams that they need to beat and I'm not going to say struggling against the teams they should struggle against but would you say the Packers are beating the teams they need to beat as they get ready for sections it, the last week I think we're going in the right direction they definitely were on a roller coaster we had a lot of injuries we had that flu bug go through the team I didn't even want to go in the locker room it was gross <laughs> uh, but you know the boys are all coming together in the last two three games you can you can feel the chemistry though they're definitely gelling together if uh if the, this team two weeks ago nothing compared to what they are now they're they're definitely playing together as a team they've uh, had some adversities so i think that's been bringing them together and making them play better together speaking of playing better together you and i have a, a new ohm steel twin city steel connection yes and the way tartan and south st paul have played this year sort of reminds me of that team that we were both a part of in, I believe it was 2013 or oh, so. Yeah, we had a couple years there together, though. We Madness, did. And then we went to White Bear. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but th those times were in, were in badness. And I can remember some of the trips with the boys to yes. Mason City and uh, Chicago, too, was, yeah, it, was that, an awesome trip. That was a fun trip. We, you know, back those, it was, Go at 52 games, 55 games, something like that. 55 games. You're on the bus with those guys. You know, two, three-hour road trips around Minnesota, and yeah. then you get the long ones down, eight hours down to Chicago. Well, should be a six-hour drive. It turns into an eight with the bus, <laughs> with the full 18, 25 hockey guys. Yeah. So yeah, that was you know those guys. You know, still I still keep in touch with a lot of them. Nice. You know, they're those are uh, they're definitely. A, uh, Players in effect or impact the coach more than they know. And that team specifically impacts the broadcaster as well. <laughs> Been a pleasure, my friend. Yes, no, it was always fun to see a dish and uh, always I'll just keep doing more color with you. Ha. <laughs> uh, we'll get ready for the third period and that comes your way in moments. And as we wait for the, for the third period, always fun to run into that guy. He he is one of the best, and uh, well wishes to everybody uh, involved with the New Ohm Steel as well. Um, just great memories all around. As you see, Jonah Roberts with two goals this evening. Uh, skating around, getting ready for the third period of play. The third goal for Tartan that's on the board right now is Marshall Ons, his 10th of the year. On plays midget hockey for the Minnesota Blizzard U18s. And so it'll be intriguing to see if the physical play continues as we are almost ready to go with period number three. Ready to go now, period number three is live and in color. Face off one by the Titans as this one comes back to Pudzier. And now Tartan back out to center as this one is advanced by Bertelson. Brock Bertelson fires in that shot that comes off the side of the cage and he's run in two. It'll come to South St. Paul now as they skate ahead two on two at the line. Chasing after it is Jacob Saber and he lost his angle. Here comes Tartan on the ricochet. 
and this one will be found eventually by Marshall on for a shot that is gloved and covered by Cole Sitar, who you see on your screen there, 40 or 36 seconds into the period. This has been a fun one from the word go. Face off in the South St. Paul defensive zone. And the puck is down. Face off one by South St. Paul as they come back around the corner. This one will come near Carter Heimerl. And chased over by Josh Lissick. Lissick skated that ahead to Brandon Reynolds. And now Tartan looking to keep pace with a 3-1 lead that they have to build on. Over to Roberts, who is looking for a hat trick as this one is eventually found by Heimerl. Heimerl sends that one down. It'll go to Osell, and Osell back behind the cage. Osell now chipped that one, but it got blocked on the way through. And now here comes South St. Paul. Chipped ahead by Heimerl with 15 and a half to play in proceedings. Now it'll come ahead for Tartan. This is uh, Bo Strecker. Strecker sends it over, but the pass intercepted. It'll go to Fairbanks. Fairbanks waiting at the half wall and touched around over to Young. Young with it. Back behind the cage it'll go. And touched over to Shet Bertelson, who keeps it alive for Tartan. More time ringing off the clock for South St. Paul to work with. They're under a football quarter with which to work. Backhand try for Tartan would not go, and South St. Paul will clear back to center where Tartan started that sequence from. Brought back ahead by South St. Paul, the length of the ice. Icing is waved as chasing in is Jacob Saber. Saber sends one out front, and that almost led to a mistake as that goes to Felton who misses wide. Felton in the slot, he's tripped up a penalty coming. Extra man on for South St. Paul, whistle goes, tripping call at 238. The guilty titan is Landon Schwantes. So power play time for South St. Paul. Puck is down back underway. And now that puck takes a weird bounce off a skate allowing Tar Tartan to skate free. Tartan now with the puck and Kisner missed the net. Here comes South St. Paul. Back to the blue line, no further as that one deflects off a body right past the net. 14 minutes as Lumber's on the ice. And now Ramirez looking to Dipsy do. Ramirez had to drop that off to win Sensen. Now over South St. Paul will clear, or uh, Tartan will clear to South St. Paul for the regather. Brought ahead by the Packers and that one sent in by Ramirez. Over to Pootzier who waits for it. Now back in, and Tartan having trouble clearing the defensive zone until just now. As this one is skated ahead right in front of us into a rugby scrum, and now back the other way comes the, or come the Packers. Brought ahead though by Winsenson, who shoots one that gets blocked. Rebound wouldn't go. And now it'll come back over to Osell, who has the puck picked from him. Ramirez, drive, blocked away. Rebound coming over to Lissick. Ramirez, goal! Three, two. Believe that'll be Brandon Reynolds, or uh, we'll, we'll check it. Reynolds got back first. We believe it'll be Ramirez's second goal of the, of the uh, night. 
We'll wait for the announcement. Time of the goal, 4.08, I believe, and it's 3-2. Brought back ahead by Tartan, and the puck is gloved and covered. As the net came off as well. Puck is down, back underway we go. South St. Paul wins the draw. This is Reed Clunder throwing it around the corner. Here comes South St. Paul, two on two at the line if they wanted it, but a big hit delivered on Clunder, and he's slow to get up as the puck hits the netting. And it apparently was a legal hit on Clunder, who was slow to get up, as he is favoring his bucket, I would be as well. Puck down, face off, one by South St. Paul. Hold on, we'll do it again. Twelve twenty-six to play in the game. Been a fun one. Could get even funner or more fun. Brought ahead, or uh, brought off, ahead off the faceoff by Tartan, back to center and beyond. Skated ahead by the Titans, and now they fence for it at the advertising. Tartan with possession, that backhand slipped wide. Rebound, comes back out, and now South St. Paul looks to turn and go. Brought ahead by Heimrell, as it'll go back over near Brandon Olsen. Now Tartan brings it ahead. This is on, looking to Dipsy, doing the slot, and his shot was gloved by Sitar. We are going to take a look at the last goal for South St. Paul. We have not had an announcement yet as to who scored it. I think it, we think it was Ramirez. As play back underway. It's 3-2 though. As the puck is back out to center. Here comes South St. Paul. Brought ahead as it, as it is by Wilebski Hen Henriksen. And it's saved by Cashin. Tartan is 7-1 on the season when they lead after two periods. Not much more needs to be said. <laughs> Face off coming in the offensive zone for South St. Paul. Puck is down, back underway we go. Around the corner, this one is found by Nathan Osell. Osell worked it back from where he got it. Now coming up for the Tartan, or, or the Titans I should say. Brought ahead by Bo Strecker for a shot. Blocked aside, excuse me. And it'll go to Easton Strecker. Bo, right in front as it's kicked away wide. Now South St. Paul will control as this one comes near Winsensen. And get regaining control as Clunder back behind the cage. 11 minutes to play as a, a Titan slipped up back behind. And now South St. Paul regathers and into the offensive zone they go. Touched on by Winsensen around the bend. And it will eventually get over to the far side where Tartan will control and free it up. Now back over, and McClellan will regather for South St. Paul. Touched ahead by the Packers, in on net, so no icing, but the quick stop. 10.23 to play. Third period of things from here at the Tartan Arena. You see the Tartan Titan bench. They give the goal to Reynolds. So it's Ramirez with one and Reynolds with one. Reynolds goal, his fourth of the season.
fourth of the year for Reynolds, and you see the flip side for South St. Paul. They are two, eight, and one when they trail after two periods, which they did entering the third. Face off and a rugby scrum for it. South St. Paul with a shot from McClellan. Wouldn't go. Rebound back to the point. Whistle goes. Penalty coming. What for? No signal. Interference, the call. And the guilty packer is Brandon Ogren. The six foot, the six foot, 195 pounder did not do himself any favors. So he will sit for two minutes and think about his sins as Tartan goes on another power play. Tartan wins the draw, but the puck ejected by the Packers as we're under 10 minutes to play in regulation time. Puck back over to Roberts, who is looking for a hat trick as he is shoved near the South St. Paul bench. Two minute inter interference call to Ogren as this one comes ahead thanks to Pootzier. Pootzier waiting as that one is chipped over to Bo Strecker. His shot was blocked by Humanity in front. Nothing doing on the arms as Tartan will regather as we have almost nine minutes to play. Back over comes Bo Strecker. And he'll dump that around the corner as there's a minute to play on the power play. Puck did not leave the zone there as a Titan was tripped up. That was on. Leads to a two on one for South St. Paul. And that pass intended for Jacob Saver, leading to a penalty for a slash at eight minutes, 18 seconds. The guilty Titan, Schwantes, question mark. Yes, Schwantes to the sin bin to think about his sins for two minutes. 41 seconds of four on four before an abbreviated South St. Paul power play of a minute and 18 seconds. 19 seconds in length, excuse me. Minute 19 of South St. Paul power play coming as the puck is down and Tartan with control. Two on two at the line for the Titans if they want it. With a trailer as that one goes into the corner. Four on four time, frees up the ice from start to finish as South St. Paul looking to clear. They do as Clunder is upended in the slot area. 10 seconds on the original penalty, penalty to South St. Paul. Quick shot near side, ejected by the Titans, and the physical play mounts up. Minute 19 of power play time now for South St. Paul as that one is touched on by Saber. And that puck is still in the ballpark as McClellan will pick it up for the Packers. Here comes South St. Paul to center and beyond. This will go to Ramirez, who is looking for his second goal of the night. And now Tartan will look to clear. They do just that. Seven and a half minutes to play in the third period of play. 3-2 our score. Into the zone, the Packers go, but the puck ejected by Tartan. Line change coming for the Tartan or for the Titans if it hasn't already happened. Brought ahead though by South St. Paul back from their defensive zone. Crossed up and a big hit delivered there in the neutral zone by Heimrol. As he was looking to get run into. Quick shot by Clunder goes by the wayside. Puck still in the zone. Heimrell, I believe, sends it down to the goal line. And now Tartan will race free 
and this one comes up with Bertelson. Hit shot in on net, but the rebound goes to the near corner. Six and a half minutes to play as this one is found by Mitch Felton. My goodness. The play keeps on coming without a second for a breath. Here comes South St. Paul. It goes over to Felton as he backhand, backhands one into the Tartan defensive zone. Tartan now with a pass that was an outlet intended for a Titan. And now the puck sent on by Shet Bertelson. Six minutes to play. Puck back, back to South St. Paul. Two on two at the line if they want it, but this one touched in on net. Gloved, covered, and play stops with 549. Words escape me at this point as you see the Tartan upcoming schedule. They play Simley on February 1st, Hill Murray on Feb 6th, and I believe section play starts on February 11th, it looks like, as New Richmond, actually that's part of the regular season as New Richmond will come into town. Whistle goes for an offside. And Simley is also a section opponent of Tartans. You see Irondale and Woodbury coming up in February as well for the Titans. Puck is, is uh, outletted by South St. Paul back behind the cage. As it comes into the neutral zone now for Tartan. Five and a half to play. South St. Paul with possession. And back behind, it'll come to Polotichuk. Polotichuk tried to get it to Sabre, and now the puck bounces on one of its ends into the Tartan defensive zone as we tick down to the last five in the bank. It'll come back over, tipped ahead by Strecker, icing the call with 4.57. Icing the call, you see the South St. Paul bench as the puck will be dropped in the South St. Paul offensive zone. 3-2 our score. And a quick shot from Clunder goes by the wayside. The rebound finds the upper netting from Owen Ramirez. So it found netting, just not the right way. Puck is back down. Tartan looking to keep the one goal lead intact. Centering feed back out to the point and a breakaway for the Titans. This one brought ahead. Quick shot and a goal. Marshall on. No, check that. It is Marshall on. Marshall on with his second goal of the, of the game, putting Tartan in front four to two. You see it here off of a deflection, and on is off to the races as he beats the goaltender glove side. Four and a half minutes to play in the game, Tartan with a 4-2 lead. And here come the Titans once more. On, you'd assume, with a shot that's gloved by Sitar. On with two goals, 11 on the year, which that graphic does not tell you. 30 goals in his career also. And now a tip off a shot by Osell. 
And uh, Josh Lissick almost made a mistake. Osell retrieves. And now this one found by Luke Young on the right side. Young has his shot blocked. Over to help out is Schwantez. Schwantez gets around one. And now it'll come back over to Schwantez who back ends one over to Milan. Milan dropped it off and here come the Packers. Brought ahead by South St. Paul to center and beyond. When Sensen was who that pass was intended for. And regathering is Jacob Lissick, or Josh Lissick, excuse me. Brought ahead by Felton. And now gathering is Brayton Fairbanks for Tartan, three and a quarter left to play. Brought ahead by Tartan, this will go to Schwantez and his pass intercepted, but it's regathered by Roberts. Roberts in front, he couldn't jam it home. Now the puck precariously in front, quick shot near side, club down. You see, you see South St. Paul's schedule coming. They have four games against Irondale first on February 1st. Then they play Sibley, Chantry Academy on February 10th. And they're at Hastings on February 13th as a timeout was called. And Gentry Academy is a section and Sibley are both uh, section opponents for South St. Paul. As a timeout called there, giving us a chance to breathe a moment, which we have not had all game. Let's take a look at the last goal for Tartan. This is one where Marshall on races in and says, I'm better than everybody. Putting one back over the glove hand of Cole Sitar, who is en route to his fourth loss of the season. If the result holds, but we've seen anything. 2.52 left to play in proceedings. And if this game indicates anything, it's much like the uh, New Ulm or Twin City Steel season that Mike and I talked about in the second intermission. That was up and down through the year before the Steel caught fire and headed all the way to the uh, then the NA3HL National Championships in Chicago. Back underway with a puck drop. And now it'll come back over right near uh, Cam Clunder. Out to center, Clunder found Ramirez, but Ramirez will tip that one on. Hoots here back behind the cage. He got sandwiched by two Packers. Over it'll go. And a rugby scrum for it, won by the Titans. Cross ice pass, intended for no Titan in particular apparently, as two minutes and a dime remain in the game. Brought ahead by McClellan, or brought back by McClellan to retrieve. McClellan looking and a tip forward as the extra attacker thinking of coming on for South St. Paul. 155 to play as that one falls innocently. Extra attacker is on, and an icing call will be made with 148 to go. That would be something. Six on five the rest of the way, you'd assume, for South St. Paul. Unless something nasty happens, we'll call it. Puck down, back underway we go. South St. Paul wins the draw. Into the corner, it'll go into a rugby scrum, but this one kept alive by McClellan. Hit shot, blocked away by Humanity in front. Quick shot on the ricochet by Saver up over the net. Rebound, comes back over into the corner. 
Now back out to the point, and a quick shot floats in innocently for a save by Cashin. And apparently I can float like a butterfly and sting like a bee. You're welcome, everybody. 128 left to play in the third period. I'm definitely not the greatest, though. 4-2, our score to Tartan. Puck down, back underway we go. This one gloved down by Strecker, and he'll send it to neutral. Where regathering is Ramirez, empty net for South St. Paul with a buck and a quarter. Now this one will come up ice as this one is sent around by Clunder. This, uh, the puck found by Tartan. And now South St. Paul with a shot, Ramirez right into the glove of Jack Cashin, who saw it all the way. Cashin has been on point the last half of the game. 61 seconds left in regulation time. Face off in South St. Paul's offensive zone. Final minute of play as the Packers win the draw. Quick shot by Clunder was or did not materialize as South St. Paul gets into a delayed offside situation, further shooting themselves square in the foot. 40 seconds to play as that one is found by Ramirez. Ramirez kept it alive. Shot by Reynolds wouldn't go as it rainbows up and down to Ramirez who kept it alive. Race to the puck. Tartan wins the race and the shot went wide. 26 seconds, another try goes wide for Tartan. As we now down, or tick down into the last 20. South St. Paul looking to take their 10th loss of the year as that goes the length of the ice with 7.9 to play. The Tartan Titans will look to win 11 games of their first 20. You see happy individuals in the crowd and sad ones on the South St. Paul bench. Final face off, this one academic. South St. Paul wins it. Puck stolen by Tartan in the shot from Roberts goes by the wayside, buzzer sounds, and that'll do it. Tartan wins their 11th game of the year. Jack Cashin wins his seventh game of the year. And that will do it from here. The Tartan Titans defeat the South St. Paul Packers by a count of four to two. to watch and it was wonderful to watch it with you. Thank you for spending your Thursday with us. For Mike Simons and everybody that's been a part of this one, Jeff Fisher saying so long from Tartan Arena where it is the Titans who are the Titans.